in order to make our lecture a little bit more hands on I will use Octave to uh, demonstrate using simple scripts a uh, solution of sharing your equation and some general tendencies in how let's say wave function behaves and how uh, the observables behaves how behave uh, how let's say uh, transformations from one m representation to another uh, influence at least what we perceive as the result of uh, of the Schrodinger equation. Now there has to be at the beginning one very important disclaimer. This is not about solving Schrodinger equation in general, but it's about solving uh, the, this problem for systems with uh, discrete uh, discrete energy levels. Discrete levels. Uh, and uh, of course a finite number of them so what we want what we need to need to know what will be our trick to solve the Schrodinger uh, equation so the trick will be the following the trick has few steps so first thing will be we will switch into diagonal representation so switch into diagonal representation which means we would need for any Hamiltonian we will get as a matrix we would need to find a basis in which uh, this Hamiltonian can be represented by a diagonal matrix then the second step after we find this will be we will calculate evolution operator I will talk about that a little bit in a detail we will calculate the dynamics basically of the system for some short time step dt so calculate evolution operator operator for a time step delta t and this will be of course finite it will be some resolution that we in which we want to see the dynamics let's say one femtosecond or something like that the third step then will be this converting this result back to our original basis convert the result into original basis this we will do in order to get the result in a form that we expect it let's say if we want to look at things uh, from the point of view of individual uh, chlorophylls uh, then we of course have to uh, look at our results in the same basis even though we calculate it in a basis which will uh, diagonalize such a Hamiltonian okay so this is sort of the first part of it and then once we have all this prepared this is sort of a preparational part then the step four is to set up the initial condition set up initial condition which would mean defining the vector that specifies the uh, initial state of the system and then using uh, this uh, uh, evolution operator for time dt which we have converted back to the original basis we will iteratively iteratively propagate the system always with a step dt that's what the ev evolution operator allows us so here we will propagate propagate iteratively and the scripts that I will show the scripts that I will write um, will do precisely uh, this here somewhere at this point one could specify uh, the parameters of the system of course here one specifies Hamiltonian and so on and we'll do the propagation and look at the uh, at the results so now uh, it's quite important to know how this all works and that it works I mean I've been stating here that we can do that but there's a little bit more theory behind that so um, let's say we will specify we'll specify the Hamiltonian first so that that's let's say at one we specify the Hamiltonian Okay, the Hamiltonian will have the following form. It's a matrix. We will have uh, energy 
energies on the diagonal certain coupling now of course we will not be uh, looking uh, into a system into a homodimer anymore but well we can so we can have um, epsilon 1 epsilon 2 different you can actually have even more energies because we will be solving everything on a computer so we are not limited to our limited capabilities of working with small matrices so these two are therefore energies energies of states that are involved and these two these two are coupling energies all right so first thing we will do is we will find we will find uh, a, um, we will find eigenvectors. Of course, we will do this numerically, but in order to understand what does it mean, I will have to show a few things here. So find eigenvectors. That is such vectors for which, for which the h multiplied by that vector, let's call it a, will give me just a number we will denote it uh, epsilon a tilde just a number multiplied by that vector in matrix form this means we will have in our simple case da -da -da, vector with elements a1 a2 and here I'm getting epsilon a tilde and a1 a2 now the interesting thing is interesting thing about these eigenvectors is that um, something interesting uh, happens if I organize the these vectors into a matrix. So I will create a matrix S, and in that matrix I will organize these elements these elements into um, into row uh, no no into columns. So there will be a first vector a one a2 and let's say we can continue uh, this will be the first vector so I will denote it here by by a super index 1 as saying that it's the first vector and here are the the um, the indices of the elements inside the vector so then I, I, I take the second vector I put it here 1 2 and a 3 etc and because it's the second vector I give it this super index 2 and I continue the same way as long as I have vectors so this matrix this matrix is interesting now because when I multiply that matrix by Hamiltonian from the left now you know I'm showing here 2 by 2 Hamiltonian but that's just an example I could have written something much bigger so whenever I'm writing just letters I really mean a general general Hamiltonian and general uh, matrix S yeah so in this case what happens so how does the mul matrix multiplication proceed well uh, this is very basic but uh, it's important to uh, know some some rules so wh what do I do if I when, when I calculate something like this so I basically take this guy put it up here like this and then run it through all the rows here and always multiply the elements and sum them along the row so that gives me a number well first row gives me this number second row gives me this number so if I have another vector behind that I just do the same thing and write them to another row so I would have here every time the vector multiplying the H and I will uh, write in a column all the results of the multiplication by this vector with all rows of the Hamiltonian uh, it's actually best uh, if you if you just try to do it on paper alright so what I'm getting here I'm getting here uh, because these are all eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian I'm getting the vector bet just multiplied by the eigenvalue so I'm getting the eigenvalue uh, in this case it will be epsilon 1 tilde and 
just after that I'm getting this vector a1, a2 and it's the first one, 1, etc. Then I'm getting, and this is, this is the first, first column of the hs. In the second column I'm getting the other eigenvalue and uh, again I'm repeating the vector a now the, the, the vector 2 etc so this continues I mean it can be n and it continues also this way so I'm getting a matrix which has already a rather a special form because it has the columns of the s but each column is multiplied by epsilon 1 now one has to remember or know one very important thing about the eigenvectors of Hermitian operators so well this is just a note let's say eigenvectors of Hermitian operators and for the Hermitian operator you can substitute basically uh, of an operator that represents a, a physical uh, thing that can be measured for example energy so these eigenvectors have very interesting property namely they are orthogonal are orthogonal and one can easily make them orthonormal which means they are orthogonal and normal uh, and that property that property can be used very in a very interesting way so i define now another matrix uh, matrix well i call it z let's say and that will be the same as s but just the vectors will not be in columns but it will be they will be in rows so i will have my vector a1 a2 a3 etc it's the first vector i will have it like this and then i will have a1 a2 a3 etc of the second vector so before i was organizing eigenvectors this way now I'm, I'm organizing them this way all right and if i do this and multiply this hs which i have constructed here by the z from the left so if i write z hs what i'm having here i'm having eigenvectors in the rows like this and here the hs is nothing else than the same eigenvectors organized in columns and each of them is multiplied by some epsilon epsilon 3 etc so what i'm getting here the matrix that will result from this matrix uh, multiplication will be a result of well multiplications of these individual vectors so I take this vector with this vector and that gives me this number so what that number will be it's the eigenvector with itself which gives one they are ortho normal uh, and epsilon one so I'm getting epsilon one here so then I take this vector with this vector and well those are two different eigenvectors they are orthonormal which means that they will if they are different they will give zero so zero and zero and here for example this one with this one also here zero only this one with this one so the second with the second gives me epsilon 2 because they are the same vectors just multiplied by with epsilon 2 tilde so as a result you see I'm getting on the diagonal the diagonal element the uh, energies and all the the other uh, other elements of Z H S will be will be zero now the Z the interesting thing about Z is that it at the same time is and you can see it very very easy that it's the inverse of S so if you would have Z S what would that be? That would be again uh, eigenvectors arranged in rows and eigenvector arranged in columns and every time I take one with one I'm getting either one and namely only in case when I'm taking the same vector or I'm getting zero. So here I would get the unity matrix 
unity matrix uh, from this, which means that Z is actually S um, as inverse. What we have shown here is then that if I build my matrix out of the eigenvectors, I can use it to transform Hamiltonian into the diagonal basis. So the Hamiltonian H dash, which will be defined as S to the power of minus 1, H, S, this thing is diagonal. Diagonal matrix. And this transformation that occurs here, transformation by the matrix S, is a unitary transformation. It corresponds to a rotation of the basis in the Hilbert state space. So rotation of the basis and nothing else. So it's not changing any physics, it's not changing any important physical properties of the system except that it uh, provides a representation which is diagonal, which means everything, everything will be much easier to, to solve.